You've probably seen the breathtaking images sent back by the James Webb Space Telescope. Those surreal portraits of distant galaxies, glowing nebulae and cosmic structures so detailed they almost feel unreal. But while Webb watches the universe from space, something just as powerful has quietly come online here on Earth. High on a remote mountain in Chile, a brand new observatory has begun opening its eyes for the first time. And what it just captured is not a single beautiful snapshot, but something far more unsettling and far more important. These are the first images ever taken by the Vera C. Rubin Observatory using the largest digital camera humanity has ever built. Images so large they cannot be viewed all at once. Images that don't just show the universe, but record it changing. This is not about seeing deeper. It's about seeing everything, all the time. And once you understand what the Rubin Observatory is designed to do, you realize these images are not the highlight of the mission. They are the warning shot. At the heart of the Rubin Observatory is a camera unlike anything ever constructed. Roughly the size of a small car and weighing nearly three tons, this single instrument captures images with an astonishing 3.2 billion pixels in every exposure. To display just one of these images at full resolution, you would need around 385 4K televisions. And that is not a metaphor. That is the raw scale of the data being produced every time the shutter opens. In a single night, the observatory can collect up to 20 terabytes of data. So much information that a dedicated 100 gigabit per second fiber connection had to be built just to transmit it from Chile to data centers in the United States. But the goal was never just resolution, it was coverage. Each image captures a section of sky equal to about 45 full moons. That means the Vera Rubin Observatory can photograph gigantic portions of the universe in one shot, while still resolving faint stars, distant galaxies, and subtle cosmic structures hidden in the background. This is not a telescope designed to admire the universe. It is a telescope designed to inventory it. Space telescopes like Hubble and Webb avoid Earth's atmosphere entirely, giving them clean, undistorted views of the cosmos. So why build something like Rubin on the ground at all? The answer lies in location. The Vera Rubin Observatory sits atop Cerro Pachon in Chile's Atacama Desert, one of the driest, darkest, and most stable observing environments on Earth. With minimal atmospheric turbulence, almost no cloud cover, and exceptionally low light pollution, this region offers conditions rivaling space itself. Rubin also benefits from a revolutionary three-mirror design. Instead of the standard two mirrors used by most telescopes, its optical system uses three precisely shaped mirrors to correct distortions and maintain sharp focus across its enormous field of view. This allows Vera Rubin to see wide and sharp at the same time, something previously thought to be mutually exclusive. The result is a ground-based observatory capable of competing with space telescopes in clarity while surpassing them in scale and speed. When the first official images were released in June 2025, they were described by astronomers as some of the most breathtaking astronomical images ever captured from Earth. One of them, nicknamed the Cosmic Treasure Chest, is a massive mosaic of the Southern Virgo Cluster, located about 55 million light-years away. Built from over a thousand individual exposures taken across seven nights, it reveals a region containing roughly 10 million galaxies. And that image alone represents just 0.05% of the galaxies Rubin is expected to observe over its full survey. Zooming into the mosaic reveals spiral galaxies interacting, merging systems stretching tidal streams between them, foreground stars from our own Milky Way, and a distant backdrop of faint reddish galaxies extending deep into cosmic time. Another early image shows the Lagoon Nebula and surrounding regions in astonishing width and color, revealing star-forming clouds, clusters, and nebulae that would normally require multiple telescopes and years of observation to assemble. Rubin captured it in hours. These are not curated highlights. They are routine outputs. What truly separates the Rubin Observatory from every telescope before it is not what it sees, but how often it sees it. Over the next 10 years, Rubin will repeatedly scan the entire southern sky every few nights, building a time-lapse movie of the universe. A record of change. It will track exploding stars, shifting asteroids, pulsing variable stars, and even interstellar objects passing briefly through our solar system. In just 10 hours of test observations, 
Rubin already identified over 2,000 previously unknown asteroids, including several near-Earth objects. Over its lifetime, it is expected to discover millions more, along with countless transient phenomena that appear and disappear before most telescopes ever notice them. By the end of the survey, Rubin will have collected more optical data than all previous observatories combined, generating around 500 petabytes of information. This is not astronomy as observation. This is astronomy as surveillance. The universe will no longer be something we visit occasionally. It will be something we monitor continuously. For most of human history, the night sky felt permanent. Stars rose and set. Constellations stayed fixed. Change, if it happened at all, was too slow to notice. Rubin destroys that illusion. By scanning the entire southern sky every few nights, the observatory turns the universe into a living system, one that flickers, shifts, and evolves in real time. Supernovae appear where nothing existed before. Variable stars pulse like cosmic heartbeats. Asteroids drift silently across the background, betraying their motion only when viewed again days later. This is why the 10-year duration of the survey matters. Rubin is not just collecting images. It is building a temporal record of the universe, frame by frame, change by change. For the first time, astronomers will not ask what the universe looks like. They will ask how it behaves. Some of the most violent events in the universe are also the shortest lived. Supernovae flare and fade. Gamma ray bursts vanish in moments. Interstellar objects pass through the solar system only once, never to return. Until now, many of these events were discovered too late, after they had already peaked or disappeared. Vera Rubin changes that equation completely. Because it revisits the same regions of sky so frequently, it can detect sudden changes almost as they happen. A star that wasn't there last week suddenly appears. A galaxy brightens unexpectedly. An object moves against the background stars in a way that betrays its proximity. This rapid detection allows other observatories to respond in real time, pointing space telescopes and ground-based instruments at targets Rubin flags automatically. Rubin is not working alone. It is becoming the universe's early warning system. While Rubin is famous for deep space, one of its most immediate impacts may be much closer to home. In just 10 hours of early observations, the observatory identified more than 2,000 previously unknown asteroids, including several near-Earth objects. And that was before the real survey even began. Over the first two years alone, Rubin is expected to discover millions of new asteroids, vastly expanding our catalog of solar system objects. It may also become our best tool for detecting interstellar visitors like Oumuamua and 2i Borisov, objects that originate beyond our solar system and pass through only briefly. These discoveries are not just scientific curiosities. They improve planetary defense, help us understand how solar systems form, and offer rare samples of material from other star systems. Rubin is turning the solar system into a monitored environment, not a static diagram. By the end of its mission, the Vera Rubin Observatory is expected to generate around 500 petabytes of data. That is 500,000 terabytes, billions of objects, trillions of measurements, this data set is so vast that no single research team could ever exhaust it. Instead, Rubin is building a legacy archive, a resource that astronomers will mine for decades, finding patterns and phenomena that the original designers never anticipated. Discoveries will emerge not just from new observations, but from new ways of asking questions of the same data. In many ways, Rubin represents a shift in how science itself works. From isolated experiments to continuous observation, from snapshots to histories, from small data sets to cosmic scale information, the telescope is no longer just an instrument. It is an engine of discovery that will keep running long after its first images fade from the headlines. What Rubin is really doing is something no telescope has ever done before at this scale. It is converting the sky into a movie. Every few nights, the same regions are photographed again and again, creating a continuous record of change. Stars brighten and fade. Galaxies subtly shift as supernovae ignite inside them. Objects appear, move, and vanish. This time domain approach is revolutionary because the universe is not static. It is active, restless, and full of events that are easy to miss if you only look once. Vera Rubin doesn't just ask what exists, it asks what happens. 
This allows astronomers to study cosmic processes as they unfold, not long after the fact. The sky becomes a living system, one that can be replayed, rewound, and analyzed frame by frame. For the first time, the universe is not just observed, it is monitored. Rubin's repeated observations also allow scientists to detect extremely subtle effects that only emerge over time. One of these is weak gravitational lensing. As massive structures dominated by dark matter bend space, the shapes of distant galaxies are distorted ever so slightly. Individually, these distortions are almost impossible to detect. But across billions of galaxies, patterns begin to emerge. By measuring how galaxy shapes change across the sky and over time, Rubin will help map the invisible distribution of dark matter with unprecedented precision. This is not a direct image. It is a statistical revelation. The motion, alignment, and distortion of galaxies become clues, fingerprints left behind by something we cannot see but know must exist. Rubin adds time to this picture, making those fingerprints clearer with every pass. Dark matter does not glow, but it leaves tracks. Most observatories are limited by scheduling, weather, or the need to focus on specific targets. Rubin was designed differently. Its mission is repetitive by design. Night after night, year after year, it does the same thing with extraordinary consistency. Scan. Record. Repeat. This makes Rubin uniquely suited to discovering the unexpected. Rare events that might be dismissed as noise in a single image become obvious when seen again and again. Slow changes that would take decades to notice suddenly reveal themselves as trends. Patterns that require patience finally come into focus. Rubin does not chase discoveries. It lets discoveries come to it. And because its data is public, researchers around the world can search for their own signals, anomalies, and surprises, turning the telescope into a global scientific resource. As Rubin builds its massive archive, something subtle but profound happens. It establishes a new baseline for astronomy. Future observations will not ask, what does this object look like? They will ask, how does this object compare to what Rubin already recorded? Whether it's a newly discovered supernova, an unusual asteroid, or a mysterious transient event, Rubin's dataset becomes the reference frame against which everything else is measured. This fundamentally changes how discoveries are validated. Instead of relying on isolated observations, scientists can check an object's entire recorded history. When it appeared, how it evolved, whether it behaved normally or strangely, Rubin is not just expanding our knowledge, it is redefining how knowledge is confirmed. Astronomy has always struggled with a trade-off. You could look deep, or you could look wide, but never both at once. Telescopes either zoomed into tiny regions of space with exquisite detail, or skimmed across large areas with limited sensitivity. Vera Rubin breaks that rule. It combines an enormous field of view with the ability to see faint objects, and it does so repeatedly. This means that scale and speed are no longer opposing forces. They reinforce each other. In practical terms, Rubin can detect faint galaxies billions of light years away, while also tracking fast-moving objects in our own solar system, all within the same observing strategy. The same system that maps the distant universe is also watching nearby space for change. This convergence is unprecedented. The universe is no longer divided into deep space and local space. It becomes a single, continuous system observed under one framework. Rubin doesn't specialize in one domain. It unifies them. One of the most radical aspects of Rubin is how it changes the discovery process itself. Traditional astronomy starts with a question. You apply for time. You point the telescope. You look for a specific answer. Rubin flips that model entirely. Because it scans everything all the time, discoveries do not need to be predefined. They emerge. An object brightens unexpectedly. A star dims in a way that defies known behavior. A transient flashes and vanishes before anyone knows what it was. Rubin captures it anyway. This opens the door to phenomena we don't yet have names for. Events that don't fit existing categories. Signals that would have been missed simply because nobody thought to look for them. Rubin is not limited by imagination. It observes first, and theory follows. While deep space often steals the spotlight, Rubin is also transforming how we understand our own galaxy. By detecting variable stars like RR Lyrae across vast distances, Rubin can map the outer halo of the Milky Way with unprecedented precision. 
These ancient stars act like cosmic beacons, marking structure, motion, and history. Over time, Reuben will reveal streams of stars left behind by smaller galaxies that were torn apart and absorbed by the Milky Way. Ghostly remnants of past collisions stretched across the sky. This turns our galaxy from a static picture into a living record of interaction and growth. The Milky Way is not finished. It is still assembling itself. Reuben allows us to see that process unfolding quietly in our own cosmic backyard. Perhaps the most important thing to understand about the Reuben Observatory is that its greatest discoveries may not happen tomorrow or next year or even within the first half of its mission. They may happen years from now when patterns emerge that no one initially noticed, when rare events accumulate enough examples to be understood, when new analytical techniques unlock hidden structure in old data. Reuben was built not just for current science, but for future science, for questions that haven't been asked yet, for researchers who haven't been trained yet, for discoveries that require patience. This makes Reuben less like a traditional telescope and more like an archive of reality, constantly updating itself, night after night, without bias or preference. The universe is moving. Reuben is watching. The Vera C. Reuben Observatory did not arrive to give us prettier pictures. It arrived to change our relationship with the universe itself. For the first time in history, we are not pointing a telescope at the sky and hoping to catch something extraordinary. We are watching everything, everywhere, all the time. The universe is no longer a distant object we observe occasionally. It is a system we monitor continuously. Stars pulse, galaxies collide, asteroids drift, explosions flare and fade. Objects from other star systems pass silently through our own, and none of it happens in isolation anymore. Reuben sees it all, records it all, and remembers it all. This is not astronomy as exploration. This is astronomy as awareness. The true power of Reuben is not its mirror, its camera, or its data rate. It is the fact that it turns time itself into an observable dimension. It allows us to witness change on cosmic scales, to see patterns emerge where once there was only noise, to catch the universe in the act of becoming. And there is something quietly profound about that. Because when you watch the universe change night after night, year after year, you begin to realize that permanence was always an illusion. The sky was never fixed. We just weren't looking often enough. Reuben reminds us that we live in a dynamic cosmos, one that does not wait, one that does not repeat itself, one where every moment is unique, fleeting, and unrepeatable, just like us. This observatory carries the name of Vera Reuben for a reason. She revealed that most of the universe is made of something we cannot see. And now, the telescope that bears her name is revealing that most of the universe is also something we were never watching closely enough. That era is over. If you want to stay connected to a universe that no longer stands still, if you want to witness discoveries as they happen rather than hear about them years later, then stay here. Subscribe. Because from now on, the universe isn't just out there. It's unfolding.